Today I'm going to share some of my favorite tips on close-up and macro beauty photography, including things like lens choice, depth of field, and angles in order to help you get impactful beauty photographs. Lindsay Adler here, and one of my specialties is beauty photography. I shoot for skincare brands, eyelash companies, foundation lines, and a lot more. And a lot of this work, this type of commercial work, includes close-up photographs, either using a telephoto lens or a macro lens in order to capture extreme detail shots. Now, this may sound easy, but there are actually several issues that you'll run up against to make this type of photography. It's actually quite challenging. So I wanna help you out, that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm going to share some of my favorite tips and tricks for macro and close-up beauty photography. So, let's take a look. Let's start by talking a little bit about the differences between a macro lens and a telephoto lens. So for a lot of beauty photography, using something like a 70 to 200 lens is going to be a great choice. It's super versatile, you get nice tight headshots. You can see in this photograph here where I've shot at 200 millimeters and I fill the frame pretty tight with the subject's head. What's nice is with the Canon R5, I have the ability to crop in and showcase some really beautiful details because the camera captures 45 megapixels. Now let's compare when I go over and I grab the 180 millimeter macro. Now, even though it is technically a shorter focal length, right? It's 180 versus 200. It allows me to focus much, 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 much closer and even magnify my subject. So I can move in so close that I can capture just the eye at life size or even just a portion of the eye and I don't have to crop after the fact. The detail is awesome. So typically if I'm just capturing a headshot, I'll grab the 7200, but if I need something like just the lips or the eyes or half the face, then I go over and I grab my macro lens. So it leads to the question, of course, is what macro lens is right for you? Personally, I recommend something 100 millimeters or longer. Canon's 100 millimeter macro lens is known for being razor sharp, but I actually gravitate more towards the 180 millimeter macro because it gives me a little bit more working distance. So I can still get really tight shots on my subject, but it allows me to be a little bit further away when I do so, which gives my subject figurative and literal breathing room. And I also don't get in the way of my light source. An important thing to consider with macro photography is that you are working with extremely narrow depths of field. I'm talking like millimeters or less, uh, because when you're so close to the subject, it's that camera to subject distance that actually gives you that unbelievably small plane of focus to work with. Uh, it will be very difficult to shoot at the widest aperture of the lens. So instead, what I usually do is I start around f11. Uh, I, it's a good starting place to give me flexibility. And I can change my mind after the fact, but it's usually where I stick. So in this shot, uh, I was shooting at the widest aperture of this lens, the macro lens, uh, which was f3.5. And it looks fine in this shot because the eye closest to the camera is in fact still in focus. But look what happens when my subject faces straight on. Well, almost straight on. The head's tilted just a little bit, you can hardly tell. But now the back eye is out of focus and it just looks off, it looks wrong. But if I shot at f11, it would allow both of these eyes to be in focus, which is why I usually find that this is the aperture that I start with for pretty much all of my macro shots. Now, you'll also have to be very cautious of the fact that the tighter your shot, the narrower depth of field you'll be working with. So let's say in the shot that you grab that 180 and uh, you decide that you only want the subject's eye in the frame. Even shooting at f11, you're not going to be able to get both the pupil and the eyelashes in focus. The depth of field is that narrow, like tiny. Remember that the closer you are to your subject, the less depth of field you're going to be working with. So you can see in this example that uh, not only are the eyelashes completely out of focus, but so are some of the sequins. Now for creative shot, honestly, it's completely fine. Uh, you don't need everything in focus and I like it, but let's say that you do, like you're shooting an eyelash campaign or something like that. Well, you can start by shooting at F16 or F22, but it's probably not going to be enough. So your next option, my next recommendation is that you back away from your subject for just a little bit wider of a composition and then you crop in and post. It sounds weird, but I'm not going to get into the math behind this, but backing up actually gives you more depth of field. It's a balance. Uh, you want to get more depth of field, but of course you don't want to waste all of your pixels. You don't have to crop in dramatically in post. So you want to do this sparingly, but this is why I use the Canon R5. It's a great choice when shooting macro and, and trying to do this technique because the 45 megapixels gives me flexibility to crop in when I need to. Now, speaking of the R5, I just wanna give you a couple of tips and tricks because it has some great controls for helping you nail the focus. All right, so first what you wanna do is turn on servo mode. 
Next, make sure you turn on the face tracking and finally enable the eye detection. So these settings make sure that the camera is doing the work for you. It focuses on the eye closest to camera and it's going to be super helpful if you're at narrow depth of field. Now, if you want something in focus other than the eye, that's fine. You can use the touch and drag focus on the back of the camera to precisely control what appears in focus in your frame. Angles make a big difference in macro photography. Even the slightest change in the camera's position or maybe the subject's pose, both of these things dramatically affect the final result. So what I think you should keep in mind is that whatever is closest to the camera appears larger and it'll have more attention in the frame. And then anything that's further away will appear, appear smaller, have less attention in the frame. So notice in this example, I'm at a higher angle. The subject tilts their head towards me. Well, guess what? The eyes appear larger. But if I switch that up and I go to a lower angle, the lips closer to me, they appear larger. Now comparing these two shots side by side, you'll see that I'm able to focus on completely different parts of the frame and emphasize different parts of the subject. Now, what happens if I want both the eyes and the lips to be in focus? I wanna make sure that both of these two elements are equidistant from the camera. They need to be on the same plane. And you see that in this example. Now, the difference between all of these shots are just subtle tilts of the head or just adjustments in the camera angle. And you see the dramatic results that it really totally changes the shot. The last thought that I want to leave you with is that if you're doing close-up beauty shoots, you'll really benefit from having a concept, an idea that drives the shoot. Rather than just capturing a tight shot of a pretty person, why are you creating that image? Are you showcasing the freshness of the skin? Maybe it's a skincare ad. Or are you exploring and capturing intriguing texture? To, maybe it's creative makeup. To keep my images exciting, I'm constantly playing around with things like paint and glitter and gloss, anything that makes the shot more tactile, more unique. And of course, don't forget that you should try to network and shoot with talented makeup artists. It'll make a big difference. This person not only makes your work more interesting, maybe more creative, but it also makes it look more professional because when you are close up, especially macro, bad, bad makeup, man, there's no place to hide. It's going to be extremely noticeable. So your creative team, your makeup artist will become indispensable. I love close up beauty photography and all the creativity it allows me. But if you've never tried it before, trust me, it takes practice. Uh, it will be challenging, especially if you use a macro lens, but I know eventually you will fall in love with it. So if you want to see the gear that I used in this video and to create these shots, be sure to check out the links below and visit adorama.com. Now I've got more tips on beauty photography and fashion photography over at my YouTube channel and also at learnwithlindsay.com. So be sure to check it out. But of course, don't forget to stay tuned here because I'm going to be continuing my series on fashion and beauty photography and I have a ton of great content coming your way. So I will see you then.